The Frozen North, episode 47, our top five guilty pleasure games. Hello and welcome to episode number 47 of the Frozen North. My name is JJ and I'm your host. I am into old school games, retro RPGs, and anything of the past. To my left is a man who loves those obscure titles that you may not have heard of. His motto is, if it ain't digital, it ain't worth buying. It's Mark. (laughs) Howdy, (laughs) y'all! Oh, man. That's a good intro. I like it. There you go. And across from me sits a guy who loves all things new and shiny. They call him the Pixel Powerhouse. It's Brian. I I love power. Give me the power. Oh. That's pretty you know sweet, what? wasn't it? Yeah. That's, yeah. It, it accurately describes our gaming. It does. It really does, because yeah. he can't enjoy the battles in Sweet Coden 2, because they <laughs> don't can't. have good graphics. And I was thinking about We're that. We're not even a minute in yet, and you're already... I was thinking I, about I'm that, miffed. though. But what you're saying, no, you, it's accurate, um, because I have it lumped in categories. I, there will never be a 2D game that will ever outplay a game modern that has been good. With a game games. modern that is... Uh, <laughs> like, I have a 2D category for games, so like pixel games, like I said. Uh, right now, Final Fantasy VI and uh, Chrono Trigger sit upon the precipice of the throne of my favorite 2D older school games um, that I have played, but those are kind of like below the monoliths that are the modern cinematic uh, adventure games that I, you know, like I said, I'm a pixel powerhouse. Like I love, like you said, huh? Like, like I, said, <laughs> I, I like don't think you said, said that. Like JJ accurately <laughs> described, I am, I am fully engrossed in the future of gaming, and I love the 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 newer modern. He likes seeing that muscle. Yeah, I do. I appreciate it. There you go. There you have it. Well, with that, Mark, what have you been playing? I have been playing Diablo three, a little bit of Destiny, <laughs> not much, honestly. Probably more than um, me. And, uh, oh, Wasteland 2, which just came out. What do you think? It's, it's pretty awesome. It's it's like an old Fallout game with sort of, not really modern graphics, but it's kind of modern-ish. And it's just brutal. You're always out of ammo. You're always at risk from a disease or radiation or running out of water or being ambushed by enemies. It's pretty awesome. That it? Yep, that's it. Nice. I have been playing... Lightning returns. Still, I am I am on the cusp of beating it. I'm at the very very end. I'm literally this morning I played and I did uh, the four trials that you do right before the final boss. They're optional, but I did them because I saw what you get for doing them, and it was too good to pass up. So did that, and uh, I should hopefully hopefully today I'll have it done. If not, I'm gonna be really mad because you know how there's a timer in that game. Yeah, how I talked to you about like there you know it's a set amount of days. Apparently, if you're not strong enough to beat the end boss, you have the option to grind, which basically means you start the whole game over with your stats and uh, play through it again. I don't want to do that. I played through Bra- Bravely Default, and <laughs> I have no, no doubt, no uh, oh, desire God. to do that. Oh God! Granted, I mean it's. I mean, I'm at the end boss, and I'm only like 26 hours in, so it's not super long. But I have no interest in playing through it all again. <laughs> but overall, I, I have enjoyed the game. So, um, and also, I've been playing a little bit of. Uh, Final Fantasy 4 on the DS. The uh the updated one, the uh, the hard bu- hard version, the Japanese version of it. It is I have played and beaten the one on Super Nintendo and PlayStation so many times that I could do it with my eyes closed. This game is still giving me a huge challenge because it's the difficulty is so ramped up and I love it because it's, it's, you know, it feels almost new to me because I still have to I have to rework my strategies and that kind of stuff. So Nice. It's cool. Brian uh, played and beat the original Zelda for the NES on my DS, uh, 3DS, and uh, Good choice. I slayed Ganon pretty hard. Welcome to like the 80s. I was a little <laughs> kid when that came out, man. Give me a little. Give me a little. I was a little of, kid too. Here, here. Uh, Are you able to appreciate the pixel graphics? No, I, like I said, it was horrible <laughs> to get through, but I got through it. Um, was it really horrible to get no, through? No, it, it was. It was a trip down memory lane, but God, it was a rough game. Like just. Anyway, moving on. I beat also beat Four Swords. It's about a two hour game, but uh, still pretty good. Got to uh, slay that wind, uh, that wind priest or wind witch Vati. A little bit of story there. Uh, enjoyed that. Done with Destiny. I haven't played. I haven't touched Destiny, and I have a rant later in the show for that. What else have I been playing? Uh, I have been playing 
uh, Sweet It In 2. Yeah. I am about, <laughs> yeah. I think I'm about 10 hours, 10 to 11 hours in right now. Wasted a lot of time at the beginning talking to a lot of trees. <laughs> but As you should. Also, I, I have been playing a little tiny scotch of Batman, Lego Batman, the first one that came out. That'll come into play later in our show. And then I have also been uh, playing, pro, uh, pro, I keep saying prototype, but it's uh, Infamous 2 on the PS3. What do you think of uh, Sweet It 2 so far? I've really enjoyed it. Uh, wish they would take the battle system, the like not the battle system, but the uh, war, like the the, the big, large the battles. Big battle system, yes, yeah. that's trying to be an, a strategy RPG, and it just falls flat. I feel like, <laughs> man. But other than that, again, like I told you, the, the beginning of the game is, is a lot tutorial. of just tutorials. So, but once you actually get to start controlling everything in there, well, this is my second battle, and it did le- unlock a lot of things for me to do. So, nowhere near what you're gonna end up with, though. Understandable, but uh, it's my only complaint right now is those things. Those feel a little disjointed to the story. They don't really fit. I feel like so. There's that. Just uh, Mark, hey, Mark here's how like you can enjoy cringing. It. Just just imagine you're playing like I don't. A, I playing... Hold on. Just imagine you're playing like a companion app on your phone that isn't really a fully fleshed out game, but plays into the main game. But what? That doesn't work because like that is the main game. That's the only screen. It's I'm not the main at. game. <laughs> it's just part of it, man. It's just a means to an end. It's have telling to, the story playing, of the battle. I am playing a visual medium. I do not want to have to then visualize in my head already again more to add on Why? to the experience. Why? Because I, I, if I wanted to do that, I'd read a book. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Brian hates reading. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I would prefer to play a visual game and give me the epicness and the cinematic feel. The game does a great job of that, by the way. Just not those little war scenes. <sighs> I, don't look at me. I, I mean, I see where he's coming from. I think that they belong in the game. Don't get me wrong. They totally do because you've got to have big battles in a story like that. Sure. You know? But the execution is a little... You have to admit it's kind of goofy, dude. It is. It, the way they like <laughs> they all scream and everything like that. Oh, so good. I know you like little it. Goofy I know, sounds. but it's... Uh, come on. <laughs> it is. I, it, uh, yeah, I great game so him. far. I'm uh, really enjoying myself now that I don't have to talk to trees anymore. I, um, I really like how it, it feels much less constricti- constricted from the yeah. first one. Because in the first one, yeah, you've got 108 characters. Nine times out of ten, you have four people that you have to have in your party. Right. And then yep. it lets you pick two. And it's yeah. like, come on. And, and For and a lot I, of the characters, you've had like three lines of dialogue exchanged between yeah. them and you in the yeah. game. I really like the uh, I really like the uh, th- uh, six six party members. Um, you have them position-based and also like the unity system um, and then like customizing the runes for each guy. That's a pretty cool. It's an in-depth. It's like way it's like it's very similar to one, but they've added layers to it, so it's yeah. uh, it's pretty fun so yeah. far. Awesome. Um didn't get any new emails this week, but if you would like to email us, you can do so at frozennorthpodcast at gmail.com. You can check out our website with forum and all of our latest news and info over at fngaming.net. We have a Facebook page at facebook.com slash the frozen north. Our Twitter is at FN Podcast. Our blog is frozennorthpodcast.blogspot.com. Please subscribe to and rate us on iTunes. We would appreciate it. We're uh we're chugging right along on there. That's right. So we're up to I think eighteen reviews on there now. Yep. So pretty sweet. News. News. Mark, give me news. Oh. Give me news. Sound. Um. Extra. Extra. Read all about it. Oh, actually, that works. Oh, hey, okay. Uh, I um, thought he was gonna go. Beep, 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 I, I just <laughs> kind of what I was setting him up to do. <laughs> uh, all right. News. EverQuest next is our first article. In this article, basically, it's talking about whatever because you know we're all we're all thinking the same thing. I'm sure. Oh no, another MMO is going to c- try to come uh, and dethrone WoW. Uh, and I think WoW has weathered. WoW is like Helm's Deep of MMOs. It keeps getting tested by countless orcs, and they just splash upon its wall and die every time. But they almost won. The orcs almost won until Gandalf showed up and scared but them how all. many? But how many orcs died before they almost won? And it took a long time. Yeah. Fair right? enough. So, and the way I describe this article, they talk about a lot of things they're going to do that are... They keep saying it's like the next gen of MMO. Buzzword, obviously. But specifically, they talked about a dynamic NPC system. So, one of the big complaints I have with MMOs, I'm not sure about you guys, are that uh, NPCs kind of just stand static and are just waiting for you don't feel like they don't they don't really feel 
organic to the world. They just feel like they're placeholders for you to come and, and get a quest and go. Um, in, in EverQuest Next, they're going to be dynamically interacting with the environment and you based on your race, your faction, uh, what quest you're on. Um, all kinds of really, and the, and the way they describe it is like, you know, if you're a bad guy, maybe this uh, NPC will kind of, you know, you know, cower back at you or will, you know, spit at you or show disdain towards you or on the transverse be like friendly to you and, and look at you with reverence. It's not really anything new though. It's not new. Wow does it. Not, not the way that, the, WoW's NPCs just stand there, right? Have you ever made a Death Knight? Yeah. <sighs> You that, make a death knight, you go back to Stormwind. That one scene. All the NPCs are like spitting at you exactly. and throwing stuff at you. That, and... that one scene is what they're trying to uh, replicate in EverQuest Next, where it's a dynamic world where everything reacts to you on a personal level, which, mm-hmm. like I said, that's what they're promising. And we all know that promises can be dashed. So I hope they can do that because EverQuest Next does look very good. Cool. And uh, I am certainly looking on, on that one. Next uh, news, Mark will enjoy this. Sony has at least confirmed that they are, quote, diligently, unquote. They're working digitally. Dig- digitally. They're working digitally. They're working digitally. Dig- digitally. Well, Mark will really like that. The last, <laughs> they're on The Last Guardian. So people who have been confused as to why The Last Guardian hasn't been shown at almost every major gaming convention I'm not last confused. Year. According to Sony, Team Ico, Ico has worked very hard um, on The Last Guardian and still continues to work hard. Uh, Sony said that this it has a specific time frame to re-reveal the game. When was the last time we heard anything about Last uh, Guardian? It's like three years, three years ago, ago or more, maybe more. Which was well, the last one before the and the only thing I can think of, uh, and the way that the way that Yoshida uh, oh talked about it in the interview, I think they may have changed a whole lot about the game because they they said re-reveal. So I don't know if it's going to be the same thing we saw. In old trailers, I think maybe they revamped it, did some updates or something like that. But and the uh, stuff they were showing in those trailers looked almost like how are they going to design the game to actually work this way? Yeah, it was almost it was too ambitious to the point that it seemed unrealistic. Now, uh, Yoshida uh, in this article, I guess he was questioned about a few things, and this kind of brings us back to uh, uh, the episode prior when we uh, had that big argument about exclusives. Well, he's been getting a lot of criticism. Uh, Yoshida has uh, because a lot of these these PS4 games or these PlayStation, I guess, IPs are actually going to be multi-platform. And when asked about that, he said, look, uh, we're going to make sure that people understand that it's best played on the PS4 platform. You know, that, that, oh, yeah. Go on. Everybody knows that anyway. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> that was a big, uh, basically see destiny, you know, destiny boosted PS4 sales by, you know, ton, uh, when it came out. So, so you're saying that SCE games are going to be multi-platform? Uh, like the Last on, Guardian is most likely going to be multi-platform. Like on Xbox? What? The whole world doesn't make sense now. <clears throat> Only me. I don't know anything about yeah. it. It's, uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if specifically The Last Guardian or he was just getting criticized for like games like Final Fantasy uh, 15 and, and Kingdom Hearts, but, uh, but he was talking about that. I, mean, I thought it was interesting. Uh, next article, Star Citizen. Uh, Star Citizen, Citizen passes 55 million. Um, and that the creator is basically like... Uh, 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 um, what Star Citizen is, it's on, a, it's on Kickstarter. It's a space simulator. <sighs> space sims I have a love-hate relationship with because they can be incredibly rewarding and fun, but at the same time incredibly boring. Uh, because, again, you're talking about space and the vast distances but star citizen is the space in the from the wing commander creator chris roberts or dave roberts as i like to refer lovingly refer to him in good old dave roberts dave roberts Ugh. it continues to be in baller status mode so that means good good, good to go uh by the way this has set a guinness book of world records for the uh highest kickstarter funding ever for anything that's crazy 55 million think about that uh, when it started out, they were wrapping up in October 2012 for with 2.1 million. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. So uh, the game looks absolutely. It's like photorealist. Yes. So I am. I am. My interest is definitely peaked. Hell, go donate. Make it even better. Uh, hopefully, he just uh, starts to work on the finishing product and gets it out. Uh, next article, Planetary Annihilation Creator unveils Robot Apocalypse, Real-Time Strategy, Human Resources. Mark, Best. 
Yeah, Mark actually sent me a trailer of this, and it looks so fun and funny and has the potential to be a really, you know, maybe a smart RTS. Yeah. Uh, the game takes place during an apocalypse. You control two different factions. Uh, basically, the premise of the story is killer robots came down to Earth and start to harvest humans. So in our desperate need to fend them off, we summon the old ones, uh, the old ones, old gods, the Lovecraftian gods, uh, um, namely Cthulhu and his minions. <laughs> And what, well, you can imagine what would happen. Uh, they all just start harvesting us. Everybody that's played real time strategy games know that the resources are, play a huge factor in it. On StarCraft, yep. you have your, uh, your Vespine gas and your, um, you know, your crystal. Uh, in, in this game, humans are the resources. So, hence the title. Uh, really looks fun and, and kind of cheeky, I think, is a good word Definitely. for it. Mark said it best too. Uh, it's on Kickstarter right now. I think it's going till October, late October. Uh, if it does hit its funding, it, it should be out in February. So, looking really forward to that. Super good. Cool. Tetris will feature. <laughs> sorry, we were, Tetris feature film will be a sci-fi epic. Um, Brian, they're making a Tetris movie. They are. Yeah. First of all, a Tetris movie, bad idea in the first place. But then you're thinking, okay, you know what? You know they, they had that Russian, they had the Russian Gulag there. Um, was it the Gulag? I can't remember the name. I don't know. <laughs> What's the name of the capital in Moscow? The 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 funny bu- the Kremlin. Got it. It showed the Russian Kremlin there in the end game. So you're thinking it's going to be some Russian game? No, it's going to be a sci-fi epic. What? How? That sounds terrible. I, <laughs> when I read this, I was like, I don't know why. They're, it's probably just going to be called Tetris, and it's going to have nothing to do with the game. Like Maybe everyone flies square ships, and they combine together to, to, into to, bigger squares. No, but when it's they co- Power Rangers meets Final Fantasy meets Dragons. Correct. <laughs> good call. I should just revamp this and make it like a documentary about people who are really good at playing Tetris. They have one of those. I'd watch it. It's good. It is actually pretty good. It's on uh, Netflix? Uh, it was at one point. I don't know if it still is. I'm just like picturing like them trying to like fit a, a block into a space and like the camera pans in really close on the block as it's moving really slowly and it's just got this dramatic music in the back. Like, and like you just see the piece coming down. It's like, is he going to make it? Oh, oh no. Man. And then it connects. We get it. We get okay, it. But then uh, the, the, the ship connects with the other ships. And like in Tetris, they all just destroy each other. Yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> that would be... <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Uh, anyway, um, and uh, this last article is piling on a little bit to uh, to Xbox One. I feel bad. Felt bad reading the article, honestly. Uh, in order to boost performance on Shadows of Mordor for the Xbox One owners, the <laughs> monolith actually had to tap into the Kinex resources. So, yay, the Kinex useful for something. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is just not good... <laughs> At this point, I feel like Microsoft is basically in the corner, curled up, and and everybody's just kind of kicking it. Uh, but I can't blame anybody but Microsoft for it. So, good thing you don't have to buy a Connect anymore. And what's funny? Yeah, but what's funny is even with uh, Connect resources being used to boost the game, uh, the rumor is it still gets outperformed by the PS4. That was the sound of a face palm. Yeah. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, but. Uh, I hate to uh, say a toe to so, but I definitely a toe to so. <laughs> a toe to so. Um, the connect is a worthless. There's a reference. The, the connect should have never, ever, ever been done this way. I have said it from the beginning when they announced it. It should have been completely. Should have taken that connect. It didn't do well in the first place when they first launched Connect 1.0. So why it they sold would, well? It sold well, but it didn't do well, right? True. You mean the operation of it? Yeah, right. I never people used who got it were like, oh, okay, I'm not too impressed. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I just I'm done I, talking about it. It was a bad idea, and they're still paying for it. You're done talking about it till next week. Till next week. <laughs> Tune in. I told us so, guys. I I definitely I told us so. All right. That's, That's it for news. That's news. Brian, I hear you have something to say about uh, Activision. Activision Bungie, uh, to be more specific, I bought Destiny. Okay, 
I bought it with a lot of hopes. I like Halo. Bungie is a, from what I can tell, decent at writing stories. And then I played Destiny. Had a lot of positives to it. Got to max level. Bored to tears. Activision owns Blizzard. Blizzard, their IP, Diablo 3, is the benchmark at which this kind of dungeon grinder game should be uh, adhering to. And now they're trying to release an expansion for Destiny huh. for 20 bucks. $20. Game's only been out recently. What, two months? Yes. And people are allotting them like, Isn't oh, hey, look, out? they're already releasing more content. No! <laughs> they're not releasing more content. They're giving you what content should have already been in the game. An expansion is something that expands on the game. When I beat Diablo 3 for the first time, it felt complete. I was done. Got the story. Diablo 3 does not have the best story either. It's probably Blizzard's weakest storied game. But still, saying that, Destiny had none of that. And for them to release an expansion and say, hey, we're adding content. No, you bu- I, you, I paid for your book. And as I was reading it, you ripped out four chapters and said, I'll give you these, these to you later for a price. I already bought your damn book. Give me what you wrote. Expansions should never plug in gaps to a game. It should always add value to it. I am so mad that, and, and I looked at the uh, expansion. It's literally one new strike. One raid and a few smattering of story missions. That's it. I'm sure there's new gear and stuff too. There, and there's new gear and new mil- multiplayer maps. Whoop yeah. dee f and do, man. Like this is the kind of stuff that I, I'm not gonna buy them uh, until they're like two bucks because I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make Bungie or Activision any money. This is a bad, bad move that I do not want to see become a trend. A lot of people compare Destiny to Borderlands. Borderlands has a lot of expansions that expand on the game. They don't, it's not story pieces you're missing that you need to catch up on. When Destiny ended, it felt wholly incomplete. Did, you haven't beat the story yet, Mark, have you? No, not yet. You did. Did it feel like you completed anything? Like, did you feel like you were. Well, from the story standpoint, I had no idea what was going on. Exactly. Anyways. It didn't feel like it wrapped anything up. But no, I, I mean, like, I literally had no idea what was going on at all. Right. So I just felt like I had, I had beaten a boss. And one boss. That was it. Yeah. Right. You just kind of okay. What now? What? Oh, I have to pay twenty bucks to see the Correct. next chapter. Yeah. Just. Uh, I didn't want to go to the website to look at. Uh, right. Just <laughs> the, story. the the execution of there. There's so many good things about Destiny. Just the the execution. Honestly, you know what it feels like? It feels like a free to play MMO. It does. Uh, that whole hook where it's like, hey, come play for free. But really, is it free? No. You're going to have to pay out your butt to uh, experience what it really should be. It's ridiculous, man. I uh, I mean, I benched my character. I, I'm Like I said, I probably won't touch that game again until uh, uh, the expansions are, you know, all 18 of them come out and they uh, make a bundle for two bucks. So maybe we're talking about years from now or, or at this wait, four, four months. Oh, hey, here's the rest of the game. Want to buy it? What do you guys think about that? I think uh, it's absolutely ridiculous that they're going to have an expansion in December when this game just came out. And charge $20. I feel like, exactly. I feel like if your game came out, it better be at least six months before you offer me anything for pay. Yes. Because if if you get something done that fast, there's no way you just finished it after you finished the game. You were clearly working on that during the game. And just sold it to us no, later. It really feels like they have it. It's they really feel. I really feel like it, it may be complete, or they had it already uh, mapped out. And I feel. I feel like what uh, happened was maybe they had this grand game right in Activision. And I'm not going to put it all on Bungie, uh, but maybe Activision walked in and hey, okay, we're going to slice that off. We're going to slice this off. We're going to slice this off. We're going to slice this off, and we're going to split them up. And you're going to sell this for sixty dollars, and then we're going to sell the rest of your game to them at 20 bucks a piece. So I'm going to pay $120 uh, for a game. I should have played only 64. And that's, and that's my issue is like, I, I honestly, the fact that it's this expansion, whatever you want to call it is coming out two months after it came out. Um, that, that specifically doesn't bother me that much, especially if there was something they needed to, to clear up or fix or whatever like that. The fact is they're going to charge us 20 more dollars for it. Like, 
first of all, like you said, this is something that clearly should have been included with the base game anyways. If you have to, take an extra month to do it and throw it in there, make it all, you know, shiny and, and work perfectly. But I mean, don't slice it up and just, you know, wait a couple of months and be like, okay, here's the rest of the game that you couldn't play yet, right. which still probably isn't going to be complete. No. There's and several expansions planned. More. I know. It's a you're paying a you're paying you're paying a quarter of the game for a quarter more of the because uh, look let's look, break down the story it's four planets and about six missions in each planet six to seven missions each planet with a strike or two uh, the expansions are, are only going to have one strike and about four to five missions so you're getting a quarter of the game for a quarter of the value so about the, for a third of the value for a third of the value correct so what the hell man. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's I really, I really. And, hope... and what's funny is like you hear Brian talking about this right now, and he you know he's he's going off obviously. As much as as I you know said like the game's boring, blah blah, blah and everything like that. From the beginning, Brian was a big advocate for it. He yeah. defended it. You know, he talks about you know well if you just give it a chance and you just go online, you actually look deeper into it, and you do everything like that. He has been on on the side of the game since the beginning, willing to give it a chance after chance after chance. And I mean, even now, it's like, come on. Well, you know, I had to go to a app to read the story, which is a good story, uh, but that's also a no-no. Outside third party uses should be used for basically lore enrichment Deep lore and, and not and, just yeah, yes, lore essential enrichment. Information. Not essential because Mark even said it. You just when I said, uh, you know, it's all on this uh, website, Bungie.net, and you read it, you're like, well, this gives it way more context. Why wasn't this in the yeah. game? Uh, we don't even know who the f- the first enemy you encounter is the fallen. Yeah. Oh, who's that? Oh, I don't know. They're just some guys that are on Earth for some reason. Yeah, you get you wake up from the dead, and, and Peter Dinklage is like, uh, "Oh, it's the fallen. Uh, run." Well, okay. Who? Oh, the fallen. They 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 can see in the dark. Who are the fallen? Tell me who the fall. Oh, go to Bungie dot net and collect. <laughs> go to our website. <laughs> collect out. a collectible tr- cards. Uh, can tell you what the fallen are. What? 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 <laughs> no, I mean the game. Don't get me wrong. The game's got flawless graphics, amazing um, controls. Feels extremely polished. Just they poop the bed when it comes to uh, the way they their business strategy is terrible. They did. They poop the bed. It's a real shame. It is, especially it, after yeah. playing uh, Borderlands Two last year and how good that game yes. was. Yes, and how JJ may disagree, but. <laughs> How well they presented the story to us. And the expansions. Let me talk to you about the expansions. The expansions were six hours long each. Added almost an entire side story to the game. You had the entire breadth of the of the single campaign. And then these expansions that come out enriched it. How much were they? You can buy the entire four packs. I think when they each came out, they were $15. Mm-hmm. But you could have bought the season pass uh, for like 30 and gotten mm-hmm. four expansions for 30 bucks. Just think about the size yeah. of the world in uh, each Borderlands 2. Each expansion is probably... Borderlands 2 is a long game. It's not short by any means. And each expansion added like four to six hours onto it. That's incredible mm-hmm. value. I, I really hope that Activision and Bungie gets punished for this. I don't think they will. I wish they would make incredible losses because I do not... <laughs> I, it makes me worried that this is how future companies are going to act. I don't think so. I think I think there's a lot of people who are who are pretty pretty angry. I, about I'm this. angry about it because oh. uh, I think, but it's it is making show, money. I, well, yeah, but I think it's going to show when when this expansion comes out. I mean, and this is totally totally just you know off the cuff. I have no idea and no evidence to support this whatsoever. But I wouldn't be surprised if you see really really lackluster sales, especially twenty dollar price tag for something that's not really doing much for the game. Yeah. So. And I, th- I think if that you know hit them where it hurts in the wallet, and I'll be honest with you, it. I uh, think when Master Chief Collection comes out, Destiny's going to be a ghost town because people are like, "Oh, the multiplayer is great." I could see that too. Yeah. I wish I had known about this when we did our top five publishers because this would have been more reason why I picked Take Two as one of my top five mm-hmm. over Activision because I they give you so much more value yes. in a game. Yep, I hear you. Yeah, that's my rant. I'm just I tried to like it. I tried to be on Destiny's side, but damn it. Did you just fail? It just, it just flat failed. Like, it's just, it's bad. It's a bad business decision. I hear you. All right. So, with that, contest time. Well, we announced our winner last week. It was uh, two weeks ago, I should say. It was uh, Alex. And uh, we got in contact with him, and he sent us his game choice. And, Mark, what did he pick? He picked Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition for the PlayStation 3. Awesome. 
All right, so Good Diablo choice. 3. So, honestly, I think all three of us have pretty much either beating, beaten it or close to beating it, at least the main campaign. Right? I'm, I'm more than halfway done with the main campaign. Okay. So, we're going to say we have the next two weeks to beat it from the beginning to the end. Not, we're not worrying about more di- separate difficulties because it's just not... They don't have that anymore. What do you mean? What? They don't have separate difficulties anymore. What do you it's mean? It's one campaign. You don't replay. Like What he's thinking about is how the game was at, in its iteration like Diablo 2 where you beat uh, Nightmare then you go on to Hell. Yeah. Uh, they, don't, they took that out. There's one difficulty. You can. There's a slider scale of difficulty. So if I played it all the way through on the easiest setting... I would be able to go to the end on the hardest setting? Yes. Oh, cool. Yep. You just a sliding scale. Uh, when did they change that? Uh, that was when they removed the uh, auction house. They'd all, I told okay. you they 180'd that game hard. Uh, so now there's a sliding scale. You get better rewards if you play on harder difficulties, mm-hmm. but uh, you don't need to replay the campaign. Uh, you can just slide that, that scale up a little bit. Uh, there's rifts now. So at the end of the campaign, and keep people like, well, what do you do to grind? You literally go into these rifts, and it's like a... A randomly generated dungeon with with an end boss called mm-hmm. a Rift Guardian. Uh, it's it's quite amazing, and there's bounties and all this kind of stuff. So cool. Uh, it's uh definitely uh you'll notice when you play the expansion um, how yeah. different it is. Can you choose to start over if you want to? Literally, there's two modes. There's uh, adventure mode where you uh, go do bounties in the campaign. So say, hey, go kill the butcher. Okay, go you go kill the butcher, you get experience, and then it'll say uh, you can reset everything if you want and replay the story. That's pretty cool. It is very cool. Uh, they did nice. amazing. That's why I was telling you about the sliding scale difficulty. Um, you want to keep it at a point where you can breakneck speed through it. Uh, you get the best, the quickest um, experience. So keep that slider rocking and rolling. Awesome. Yep. Good to know. So uh, in two weeks, we will know if any one of us has to put on an address. I, I'm going to assume and hope that we don't have to do that, Mark. Should be easy. It's going to be like the last day before it. Mark's still going to be on Act 3. <laughs> you're gonna, and then you're he's going to be like, easiest setting, just burn through it. <laughs> See, he's not, I'm not He knows. No, he's he's not he knows. That. <laughs> but I will beat it. <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, that's cool. That's cool to know, though, because I, uh, I yeah, did not know that they had changed they, it that there's much. There's no more replaying awesome. the campaign at higher difficulties. It's just good. all one. Because, yeah, all I have left is... Uh, I'm going to say we're going to include the expansion on this just because we... Well, yeah. That, you know, the Nemesis edition includes the expansion, yeah. so... So uh, that's that's all I've got left. It's just that. Yep. All right. So moving on. Let's do our top five for the week. Yes. Brian, what's our top five this week? Top five guilty pleasure games. Top five guilty pleasure games. Who wants to start us off? Mark does. Oh, well, I guess we should probably explain what a guilty pleasure game is. Yeah, first. let's uh, contextualize this. It's like cheesecake. Yes. Not even remotely like cheesecake. Not e- not even a little bit. Nope. Because I like cheesecake, and I would I would brag that I like cheesecake and tell people that I like cheesecake. But it's but if you were in a, a health clinic, pleasure. but if you were in a health clinic, you would hide it. People were if you're like in a hippie health clinic. Correct. However, I would never be in a health clinic. Right. Look at me. Yeah. So the I only reason saying. the only reason I would be in a health clinic if there is if there was a tornado outside, <laughs> and that was the only place to take cover. And I'd be like, even then, I'd be like, should I really? I'll, I'll chance it, and I'd go home. All these moms in yoga pants would walk up to you and just be like, I can't believe you love cheesecake. Do you know how many carbs are in there? Oh my god, you are gonna die at a young age. I can't believe this. Health, 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 health. Carbs, 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 carbs. I'm fat, and I have a beard. Was that? Wow. Yeah. Was that, that was, you at the end? Yeah, that was me at the Weird. end. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so basically, we we looked at guilty pleasure games, and these are these are games that we like. We acknowledge we like. But it's not something we're really proud to tell people, whether it be because the, we know the game isn't very well received, that we know it's actually like bad, but we like it anyway for some reason. Uh, just something we wouldn't normally go around telling people like, hey, guess what? I love Pokemon. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. some of us don't care. Like me, I don't care. I love Pokemon. I do. But what better way to admit your guilty pleasures than on a podcast that's available for Oh, I'll, tons I'll of freely admit it, but free. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> All right, and I promise that my list only has two Final Fantasy games. Well, three Final Fantasy. Well, okay, maybe four Final Fantasy yeah, games. Yeah, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> but not number one. Not number one. Nope. Not number our, one. Our number ones have coincided. Yep, and our number fours. Yes. So, Mark, why don't you start us off? All right. Uh, well, I had a little bit of trouble with this list because I couldn't think of games I wasn't proud of playing, and then I realized because there were only like six total. That's because I don't have any pride. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. 
Well, so my bad. number five is Prey. Has anyone played Prey here? Nope. Nope. All right. Prey was this game. It came out for the Xbox 360, I think pretty early on in its life cycle. It's, you play as this Oh, that's American... why, because it's out for the Xbox 360. Sure. I'm surprised that wasn't on your list. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Mark's number one is buying the Xbox One over the PS4. <laughs> oh, can I make that my number one? <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, you play as this Native American guy who's you know is clashing with the old culture, wants to be, doesn't want to stay on the reserve anymore. He's at this bar arguing with his dad, and don't fear the Reaper comes on the jukebox right as the roof of the bar gets ripped off by an alien UFO. Baby, don't fear the Reaper. Yeah. It was, a game, it was really cool at the beginning. A lot of people ended up not liking it because of conventions that weren't popular at the time. Like, you don't actually die. If you die, you just go into like this dream state where you have to like shoot crows or something to <laughs> come back to life. But I thought it was a great game. The, the fact that when you're going through this alien ship, you can hear that jukebox echoing throughout. It's so scenic. It's not scenic, but there's such a great atmosphere to that. Don't and, Fear the Reaper is a fantastic song, too. Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah. And this <laughs> this game, the, <laughs> it is a good song. Yeah. Uh, it's fantastic. It's like nothing to do. But the engine did some really cool stuff. At least at the time, uh. it was really cool. Like, you could create portals that would, in real time, render the environment on the other side, much like Portal does now. But it had never been seen before. You can also be shrunk down and stand on, like, an actual spherical planet. But it's actually just, like, a tiny rock in a case that you're inside of. So I thought it was a great game, but there are some problems with it, and people, people in general seem to think it's a mediocre game. All right. Brian, number five. Uh, Brian, number five. Ratchet and Clank series. Good God, man, I love that series. Um, they're well, they're, I mean, it's, it's Insomniac, so they make great games. They made Psychonauts, but this series is uh, definitely geared for kids, but I'm... I grew up with platformers, right? Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie. So these kind of games <laughs> I love, but I'm not necessarily proud as a 30-year-old man that I love these uh, cartoony uh, platformers, but they're a definite guilty pleasure of mine. Uh, Jack and Daxter is another series that I adore. Um, Ratchet and Clank, just be, just because of the characters in it, like uh, Captain Cork, who uh, reminds me a lot of... Um, Futurama, what's the uh, captain's name? Zap, Zap Brannigan. Brannigan. Reminds me of Zap Brannigan. The villains are hilarious. The premise of the first Ratchet and Clank is there's a, a, a species who's flying around and taking chunks of planets and putting them together to make their own planet. Um, just hilarity ensues. I uh, love those games. Very cartoony, though, so uh, not something that I <laughs> routinely talk about, but uh, I'll, I'll let you all know that these are it's a great series, and if you like these kind of games... Go play them now. There you go. My number five. <laughs> it's a game that I constantly ridicule. I know. And uh, make fun of and give people crap for liking. But I do like it. The whole Final Fantasy thirteen trilogy. Yep. I, uh, my, I've always said my biggest complaint is that it just doesn't feel like a Final Fantasy game. However, the fact that, you know, you take that out, you take that out of the, the, out of the equation... And it is a solid game in its own right. I'm not a big fan of the characters. I'm not a big fan of the way they don't feel like a family. They all pretty much hate each other the entire time. And they never really come together except just to fight a boss at the end. And even when you play the second two games, they're all separated out. And nobody really cares about each other anyways. I still like the mechanics. I like the gameplay. I even... Even though I, I make fun of the battle system, same thing, uh, especially in the first one where you can pretty much play the whole thing on autopilot, there is some thought involved, and especially like when you start to get later on in the game and you do some of those boss fights and stuff, there's no way you're playing those things on auto battle. I think Brian can attest to that for sure. That, I mean, you, you've got to have your, your uh, what are they called? Paradigm shifts. Paradigm, yeah, you've got to have those uh, set up right, and there is there is some thought involved to it, but I don't know. I, I do like it as a standalone game, and honestly, I would have just put... Final Fantasy like 13 2 on there because I think that's that was my favorite of the three but after playing Lightning, Lightning Returns I think that might be my favorite one of the three as, so as it's gotten better as that, it's gone. I yeah. think so um, and that's believe me that has nothing to do with the story because I still think the story is garbage 
But as far as mechanics go and, and gameplay and, oh my gosh, graphics, it looks gorgeous. Uh, I still, I do think it is a solid game and I will still make fun of it yeah. forward. But just know that I do actually like it. I do respect the, the people who made it. I just don't feel that it is a good follow-up to previous games in this series. So, my number five, the Final Fantasy Thirteen Trilogy. Mark number four. My number four is Oni by Bungie. What? You say yeah, Bungie? It's by Bungie. Did you know that? It is. I hear they have an expansion coming out for $30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a PS2 era game. It's essentially, if you take like the plot and the tropes of something like Ghost in the Shell and just completely blatantly rip it out of that, yeah. including the archetypes of the characters, right. and just copy it into a game, that's Oni. It's basically Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> yeah. But it's 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 cool. I like it because it's, <laughs> it's cool. You get a robot running around, flipping out, kicking dudes. Is it fun? It is uh, somewhat fun. So- <laughs> it's, it's buggy. There's some difficulty spikes. The storyline's a little bit wonky. But you get a sneak around in enemy bases that used to be your friends. It's like the whole double cross type thing. And it's built into this cool beat 'em up style gameplay where you get to like flip out and kick people and punch them and pick up enemy weapons. But it's probably not the best game ever. <laughs> <laughs> but you like it, and that's the I point. do. I do like it. There you go. Because it was cool. Oni. Mark number four. Brian, you and I have the same number four. Mm-hmm. Kind of a black sheep in the series. Are you ready for it? I'm ready for what? To, for you to name it? Are we saying it together? Yes. One, two, three. Wait, wait, hold on. How about I say one part, then you say the next? Okay. Minute. Final? Charlie's. <laughs> Come on. You know where I'm going with this. I do, but I don't know which one, which word to say next. Say, then. say, the, say F, the next F. Fantasy. Angels. Final Charlie Fantasy Angels. Final Fantasy he, Ten Two. Yes. <laughs> Basically, I'm like, what? Oh uh, yeah, he's <laughs> you know right. Where I was yep. going with that because we all thought it when we played it. I honestly, as much crap as that game gets, and, and it the does theme, get a lot. The theme is goofy, and it's very, very girly, and the it is 100 percent Charlie's Angels. Yeah. But honestly, again, this is another one of those things where if you take out the theme and you look at the mechanics of the game. The story's uh, the story. Honestly, I mean, just the the whole. I I kind of like the idea of seeing the 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 video messages and stuff, and actually trying to solve the mystery of who that is and and what's going on with it and everything. Yeah, uh, execution kind of you know not the greatest, but I loved I love I love jobs in Final Fantasy, and that's exactly what this game had. Granted, it was playing dress up. It was basically changing your but outfit. I, but... I still think it was solid. And it was gorgeous, too. Yeah. Um, you beat the game, right? Oh, yeah. So you, you got that part where you're running on that final boss, and it's like a giant snake long. Yes. Oh, that part? Yeah. When I got to that, I was like, okay, this is this is legit. Like, I, you know, I made fun of it when I first started playing it, too. I was like... It was I'll lot, still make fun it of was it, a lot of It's a lot of girl power, a lot of, like, you know, uh, Yuna and uh, Riku are joined by the new character, um, Pain. Pain, and they're all very... <laughs> You know, Yuna sheds her um, traditional uh, priestess dress for little short shorts and uh, a couple guns. Yep. So Riku's the exact same. <laughs> Riku's the same, Doesn't but change. yeah, you know, and yeah, when you first play it, you're like, uh, and you never get new characters. It's the three throughout the game, but man, but you unlock jobs. You unlock jobs, so you you change up their style a little bit. But man, that the visuals and like the toss in a few musical numbers. Oh my god, I forgot about those. <laughs> It's definitely a, it's good. Like I'm I'm ashamed that I like it, but I do I did like it. I and I agree. I'm so glad that somebody else feels that way about that game yeah. to me cuz I I every time I hear somebody complaining about it, they're like, "Yeah, I like Final Fantasy 10, but oh man, did you play the sequel?" and I'm like, "Yeah, it's it's terrible. It's bad. I, I hate it. It's so dumb." I know, boys yeah. boys only, no girls. Yeah. <laughs> but I I I mean, I I still think it's a solid game to this Absolutely. day. Absolutely. So, do I think you should play it if you like 10? No. Not necessarily. But I don't. I don't know that it necessarily deserves all the flack that it, it gets. It is really like a Charlie's Angels, a long Charlie's Angels episode if you think Definitely. about it, because like they're they're piece and clues together. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Girling out all the time. 
Yep. Uh, so Final Fantasy ten two, Brian and I's number four. Wonderful. Wasn't that a fun Mark, one? I like your number three. My, <laughs> I do, seriously. My number three is Bouncer. Uh, for the Xbox? For, what? Who are you? PlayStation 2. Who are you? PlayStation 2. It was made by David Schaefer. David Schaefer. <laughs> um, <laughs> this I, I, was, I watched my brother play it. That's why. I did. Seriously. This On game is <laughs> made by Squaresoft. Mm-hmm. It was the first game that came out, the first game that they made that came out for the PlayStation 2. A lot of the features that were shown in trailers were dropped from it. Uh, it wasn't Final Fantasy. That right there is I know, reason no. enough for people to hate it. Yep. For a lot of people anyway. But I thought it was a great game. I did too. It's extremely cinematic. Streets of Rage. Yeah, exactly. It's a beat em up. Mm-hmm. You, you, it's got a plot that I don't <laughs> remember at all because it was probably care. garbage. They were like bouncers but, at a club. Yeah. And Bound, they fought like, people. They fought like stuff. people who were companies that maybe? were doing evil stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, th- that sounds right to me. <laughs> uh, but no, the, the plot was garbage. But it looked cool. It was incredibly cinematic. Especially for the time. When this came out, this it's a PS2 launch title. So the when we saw it, unbelievable. they look like crap now. But, oh, yeah. But, but they back then they looked amazing. amazing. Yeah. And it was like, this is what the next Final Fantasy is going to look like when it comes out. So I had a total blast playing it from start to finish. I did too. I spent hours unlocking all the characters and, mm-hmm. and playing multiplayer with people. Yeah, the multiplayer was really cool too. I loved it. But this game does get a lot of flack because it's very, very bare bones. Yeah. There's not much to it. Uh, but honestly, I don't know. I had a good time with it, too. I thought when I saw that on your list, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's a that's a solid choice. That's right. Very nice. Mm-hmm. That's another Sergeant Joe right there. <laughs> People should play it. It's I, fun. Maybe if they want they should, to. They should get the uh, the thing that lets you have more controllers on your PlayStation 2 yep. and then play with all their friends. Yeah, it is, it's, a, it's a solid game. I'll never forget sitting in, uh, in computer class uh, in, in, I believe that was, was that high school? Maybe it was junior high. Either way, I was in a computer class, and I remember one of the, one of the other guys I was sitting with who was uh, looking at, at Square's website, and they pulled up that game, and they were like, you see the new Square game that's coming out? I'm like, no, because in my mind, I'm going, Final Fantasy? <laughs> uh, and he goes, look, it's a bouncer. And I'm like, what the heck is that? And he shows me screenshots, and I'm like, it looks so realistic. Oh, my God. And, then, you know, obviously, like you said, <laughs> yeah. no, not the greatest, but, man. It looked it, amazing. It looked incredible. Yeah. Solid choice. Number three, the bouncer for Mark. Brian, number three. My number three, uh, and I am I love the Lego series. Whew. I grew up with Legos. Basically, I had probably, if you counted each piece, probably over a million easily. Maybe a billion. Maybe a quintillion. I can keep going. But I don't think you had that many. These games epitomized my childhood, and when I... I my cousin, when the, the Batman game first came out, was playing it. I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But I was like, but I'm a grown man. And this was like a kid's game. Well, my brother finally um, alerted me to the Lord of the Rings one that came out recently. He said, dude, you got to play it, man. It's like amazing. And I played it, and I immediately bought all the Lego games ever made that were licensed. So I've, I'm, I'm Did working. you buy all of them? Yes, I have. I beat the Star Wars trilogy once, uh, or the, actually the, you know. You bought all the Bionics games? No, no, no. The licensed property ones. Well, oh, okay. oh, sorry. Thank you. The licensed, God. the licensed property ones. So I have the Harry Potter ones. I still have to play through. Batman one, two, Marvel. Uh, I've got Indiana Jones. Uh, oh, I need to pick up the. Uh, need to pick up the Pirates of the Caribbean one. Uh-huh. The one I don't have. I knew it didn't buy them all. But uh, you got twenty three percent. That's perfect. Hey guys. <laughs> Stop making fun of me. I like Lego games. Lego series. Yeah. All right. Brian, number three, the Lego games. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. My number three is, hey, look, another Final Fantasy game. Oh, this just in. JJ, Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles on the GameCube. If nothing else, like, honestly, the game by itself, I could not stand playing this thing single player. It was so boring, and there just wasn't really much to do. Multiplayer, such a blast. I was working at a uh, at a restaurant at the time, and I met uh, one of my best friends now. Uh, me, him, uh, another friend of ours, and our fourth person kind of switched between two or three people that would kind of switch in and out. But I was living in a tiny my uh, my first apartment at the time, and every Friday night they would come over, and we would we all had 
uh, Game Boy Advances with the link cables, and I had the game with the GameCube, obviously, and we had a tiny little TV, and we all just, just got together and played on it, and it's such a blast with a full group of people uh, because it's, I mean, I'm such a big fan of Secret of Mana, and that's what this is with four people, basically, and it's it's just such a great time. The problem with it is, other than being a shallow game, you know, playing it by yourself, getting that many Game Boys in addition to the link cables and everything, it's so expensive to get. I got really lucky in that I had people who were willing to spring the money for their own stuff. I think now myself, I have two Game Boys and two link cables still. We never actually beat it, though, unfortunately. We got to the very end, and then there was a difficulty spike. You, you marked it? Uh, yeah. You went real mark on it there? Yeah, exactly. Well, we got to the very end, though. We played, uh, oh. we played, we played it so, for weeks. So Okay, so you... Yeah. I mean, you, we, we got to the very end, and then there was just a huge difficulty spike, and we were like, well, we just want to, you know, we want to progress, but we don't want to grind. You don't yeah. bring your friends over to, to grind in a game. True. You know, so we just kind of lost interest, which was unfortunate. Uh, one of these days, I'd like to go back and revisit it and try to try to beat it, but uh, yeah, my number three, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Not not a very well-received game for that. That's a big reason why, is because it's so hard to get people to play, especially now, obviously, GameCube and... Right. Nobody uses right. Game Boy Advances and stuff. I do because I like old stuff. But uh, all right, number two is Mark. My number two is Dreamfall: The Longest Journey. I have this on Steam. I haven't Fun played Com? it though. Yeah, what's uh? You should play it. What's its uh? Um, what's the premise? It's <laughs> it's the sequel to The Longest Journey, which is a adventure game, puzzle adventure game that came out in like I think it was nineteen ninety nine. People didn't like it so much because it had these combat mechanics that were inserted into the game that were like totally superficial. And st- a good example would be it's like uh, Suikoden 2 Disjointed. and those big war battles that are easy and boring and not exciting in any way. So people didn't like that. When it made the leap from it's really old school graphics to new school graphics people didn't like some of the ways some of the characters looked uh the puzzles weren't as complicated as traditionally you would expect from an adventure game yeah but it's still written by ragnar tornquist it's still got a great plot and it has the closest thing to the trinity site system uh, that i would say any game has you place three separate characters Sometimes your paths cross, you're seeing it from different perspectives, you don't necessarily like each other, in fact you might be hunting someone down to kill them. Interesting. And I I thought it was incredible. Hmm. Other than all the problems. Did you beat it? <laughs> I did beat it. Oh, oh hey. hey. And it just got kickstarted to have Dreamfall Chapters uh, go into development under Red Thread, Red Thread Studios, I think. Very cool. Which is good because Funcom might be in trouble. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Brian, number two. Uh, my number two is the Pokemon series. The Pokemon series is for kids. <laughs> I love it. It's not for kids. It's I like definitely it too. for kids. It is a <laughs> collection of little cute little monsters. Um, I shouldn't love it. Uh, I tried not to love it, but I love it. X I, and Y was your first one, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I played red, or was it blue or green? I played one of those back in the very, very way day. I liked it then, but uh, my first one I've ever just like d- diving into was X and Y, and you know I I went into it like uh, this game's for kids, and then I ended up loving it. So damn it! It's one of those series where you you look at it and you do think it's for kids, but then you hear so many other people like talk about how good it is, and these are not kids who are talking about it. Well, and I and I agree, but I thought going into it, and this is my honest opinion, a lot of those adults who love it now were the ones who played it when they were kids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm like, okay, that's true. I, this is probably not going to be for me because I didn't really get into it when I was a kid. I played it and I liked it, but that was you know back way way when it first came out. I was like, yeah, you know, I know people, I know tons of adults who swear by it, but uh, I mean, I'm grown, I'm a grown grown up, and it's probably not going to hook me in. And it hooked, this the collection alone, I was just like, well, I want to get that one, I want to get that one, I want to get that one, I want to get that one. You getting one of the new ones? Uh, the uh, the Ruby mm-hmm. remake, yeah, I will. I I like the series now. Damn it. Do you know whether you're going Ruby or Sapphire? What's uh, w- w- Sapphire? What color is that? Blue. Blue. I'll probably do that one. Cool. All right. My number two, Final Fantasy 
12. <laughs> That's definitely one to... Uh... A lot of people don't like this game at all. It's really, really not liked by a lot. Because Vaughn is a dumpster fire. I don't disagree with that at all. He really doesn't have a point in the game. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, uh, what's his face from uh, Mass Effect 3? Jersey Shore guy. Oh, uh, oh my God. <laughs> uh, I, I almost bought an anime uh, chronicling Vega's like history. Oh my gosh, Why would so, you do that? Terrible. Because I'm I'm everything Mass Effect man. It sounds like, like a waste of time. <laughs> that character was awful. Yeah, he was. So it was an anime, and uh, it's like oh, followed Lieutenant James Vega as he comes up through the UNSC. I was like, what? <laughs> huh? Oh, I'll buy it. Yeah, Final Fantasy twelve is. I had a great time with it, to be honest with you. I I would love to go back and replay it again eventually. It's just so long, but I I. I liked the characters, especially like uh, Balthier and Fran, uh, Bosch. But yeah, Vaughn and Pinello didn't really have anything to do with the game at like, all. If just they kind died, of if they in. just got brutally slaughtered at some point in the game, Nobody nothing would, would have changed. Yeah, like, nothing would have changed. They would have been like, oh, we're really sad those two kids got just completely brutalized and murdered. Yeah. Let's keep moving. I think I think a big reason I like the game so much is because I, I as much crap as I give 13 about being able to play it on autopilot... You can do it even more so with 12, with the Gambit system. If you have the right setup, and I think that's what I liked so much about it. It was like figuring out a puzzle, being able to set your characters up in the right way to make them be able to play on their own. And if you can do that with all three characters, which I did, I was able to just waltz through the final dungeon, made it to the final boss, and you know I did my own stuff there. But all the way up to it, I mean, I basically just let my characters be on autopilot. It just, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is I like about the game. Even Even the story itself... I don't remember too much about it because it was it was pretty forgettable, uh, but I think it's just another one of those cases. Same with thirteen, where I really like the mechanics, I really like the gameplay, and I liked that they were trying to do something new with it. Um, I still, you know, I, I give me turn based combat any day of the week over those two games, but that doesn't mean I didn't think what they did was. I'm trying to think of the right word for it. Not a step in the right direction, but at least it was innovative. For sure. Yep. It so was different. that's my number two, Final Fantasy twelve. I promise my number one is not a Final Fantasy game. It's not. It's not. But it is Japanese. Speaking of speaking of number ones, Mark, what's your number one? Oh man. I bet this is a lot of, on a lot of people's lists, Mark. Uh, my my number one is all of the mini games from Suicoden two. <laughs> So the war system? The war system, the chef battles, all the stuff you do with the bathhouse. <laughs> Brian hasn't even done the chef battles yet. You know what? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Those aren't guilty pleasures because those are all amazing. And how uh, could anyone not like them? Oh boy. False. <laughs> I, all, all I have done is the war system. My number one guilty pleasure is Just Cause 2. I bet this is on a lot of people's lists. I think it is. But the plot... Is garbage. Oh yeah, the fake accent that all the characters in this fake South American country have—they're all garbage. All right. Uh, the level of detail in the world is garbage. <laughs> but <laughs> this game has, I think, the biggest world map out of any game that has been made. Yeah, you so can far fly like video jets games. for miles. Yeah, I watched a video where it took them like. I think it was like 10 or 20 minutes to fly from one side of the map to the other side of the map on their jet. And you can use your grappling... You can Okay, so you got a parachute and a grappling hook. And you can shoot your grappling hook into the ground and deploy your t- parachute and just fly basically anywhere on the map. You can grapple onto cars and knock people out of the car with your grappling hook. You can grapple a car to a helicopter and then fly the helicopter to drag the car up into the sky and then drop it to kill people <laughs> inside. Uh... You get to, at one point. There's a mission where you have to stop their country's NASA type program from launching these spy satellites. So you start out by like going over to the launch site and blowing one up, and then they start launching. So you have to fly over and steal a jet from the military, and then shoot them out of the sky with the jet. What other game do you gonna do that in? Yeah, it's true. Very very. It's, and there's a there's a multiplayer mod for it that allows you to do things like you and forty of your friends spawn into limousines and you try and race from one side of the map to the other side of the map and the limousines through tight corners and stuff <laughs> and you just end up getting in wrecks constantly. It's 
a worthless game. There's it's no the, value to it. It's the ultimate sandbox game. Exactly. No value, but just this level of spectacle of the things you get to do is amazing. Have you beaten it? Of course I, I've not beaten it. Of course I, <laughs> of course I have not. Of course. I, Brian, if you ever ask me if I've beaten the game, it's going to be a no. That's basically what he's telling me. <laughs> All right. Just cause two. Brian, we have the same number one, sir. Woo! Why don't you say what it is? It's um, Goku and Adventures. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z! Any game. Any game. I will because buy it. Because it, regardless of how good it is or how bad it is, I think Brian and I will be interested. Yeah. Um, I had a phase, uh, Kyle can attest to this, where I would buy the next Dragon Ball Z game every time it came out. And they come out frequently. Um, there's two developers. It's very similar to Call of Duty, how they have d- different developers that get given license, the license. Um I think there's Dimps, and uh, it's all it's all Bandai Namco as the parent company, but they have just smaller developers that do it. But uh, that said, I'll buy any Dragon Ball Z game. Xenoverse is coming out soon. I'm already ready to shell out money for that. Uh, we we just got done playing Battle of Z, uh, which was just terrible gameplay. Oh, it's awful. Just uh, completely But awful. the whole time, you and I are just oh, sitting there going, so cool. And we're playing with a buddy of ours yeah. who's just there for the achievements for Xbox. Y- you know, he was just face palming about And he's just like, what are you guys talking about? We're like, you have to play the ca- character's canon. Yeah. You can't be an evil guy in an evil fight. This is ridiculous. And so, and, <laughs> oh my God, Nine so times funny. out of ten, these games are terrible um, for anybody who's not a Dragon Ball Z fan. But I am one. Uh, so to me, they're great, and that's I think the ultimate guilty pleasure is a game that's just it's not good. It's a dumpster fire. It's a dumpster. But fire. But you jump in anyway, and you just love it, and you just <laughs> bathe in all that gar- hot garbage. Because God, I'm convinced that if there was like a, a screening halfway across the world for like the new DBZ movie, you and I would probably be like, if we can afford this, we're we can afford. Yeah, and what's funny <laughs> is uh, all these games they 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 take you through the same plot over and over and over and you play it giddy like a kid every time absolutely yeah i mean and then you just want to watch the show again yep so it's it's a testament to uh how big dragon ball z is and how endearing it is and how well like written it is you know and they they said for i mean it's kind of the undisputed you know king of uh manga and anime um it's i don't know if anything will ever dethrone it i'll be honest with you that Dragon Ball Z has, and what, what do they keep doing? They keep releasing games and movies, yep. and, and they just keep get, making more and more money. Uh, it's a testament to uh, how just in, in loved that series is. Yeah, how, how diehard the fans are. Yep. Absolutely. And it keeps getting new fans, too. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, as it, they keep really, like, now they're all coming out on Blu-ray, and they'll just keep skipping generations and keep endearing new fans. I am so excited. We, we went and saw that screening for... Uh, the new movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were just like Battle of Gods, yeah. uh, Battle of the Gods, and we were just like, <gasps> yeah. And they're coming out with an- another one in February. Another movie? Yes. Like a new one? New. No way. Yeah. Like, apparently, in the plot in this one is uh, Vegeta becomes a Super Saiyan God. Oh my gosh. Yep. Oh, we're all over it. I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. All right, so that's our top five guilty pleasure games. Head on over to our forum. You can uh, tell us how ridiculous we are for ours you can post your own and uh we just like talking about them so yes there you go uh one last thing before we go we're gonna do our bi-weekly question which we missed last week but uh we had the week maybe the week before the week before that we, we haven't done one in a while either way pretty easy one though how big is your backlog you got a couple of responses on the uh form here i'm gonna go ahead and read those off rockstar says about two dozen games uh that he needs to get around to finishing Let's see, Cal, 11090210, blah, 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 says mm-hmm. uh, says around 300 games. Yeah, he's got mount games <laughs> going on. <laughs> All right, well, that's about where I'm sitting at. Yeah. Really? Yeah, three to 400. Yeah, and that doesn't include Steam. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and then I have 200 games on Steam. Those are games you own that you haven't played yet? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I'm, what I'm yeah, yeah, I know, I have a problem. Call me GWG says... He's estimating about 70. Spiky Hair John says, Two minute account between hum- Humble Bundles, PlayStation Plus games, and the random games I've collected working at GameStop. I need about a year or two off from work to play them all. Uh, at least they look pretty collecting dust. That, I completely and totally hear yeah. you on that. I think we all got games that we're just like looking at, like, I really want to play that, but God, I have so many to play. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Shin- Shinoi, there it is. 
I, <laughs> it's not that much really. Uh, funny how some people talk about getting older and having less time to play games. I went through that phase, but now I'm getting older. Gaming is actually a great way to stay le- stay level and responsible and just stay home. That's actually true. You don't want to tell people that, though. Like, if it's Friday night and a friend of mine calls me up and says, Hey, you want to go out? And I just want to stay inside and game. Yeah. I'm not going to be like, I want to stay inside and play video games. Sorry. Right. Guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. What about you guys? I mean, I, I kind of told you mine about, about probably close to Accor- four to 500 total. According to my How Long to Beat, um, now, again, these are only games that I own. I've obviously... Uh, I obviously want to play um, all the games. I want to play all the games. Yes. All the games in the world. But just my backlog, I'm at 118. As I completed 156 of my two, <laughs> 270, 276 games. Math. Woo! Math. Nice. I don't have a fancy list like Brian, but I know how many games I own on Steam, and I know that I have beaten i've played less than half of them <laughs> and i've beaten probably less than half of the games i've played so that's gonna put me at like 150 probably Woo. not too bad man <laughs> it's a lot of game time mark so you're gonna run into a problem because if you don't beat the game and you've played most of it or played a lot of it it makes it harder to go back and play it again oh i know without starting over right yep that's so why i, I mean... just don't <laughs> That hurts when he says stuff like that. I don't know why you like to hurt me, Mark. <laughs> it's because of what you said about Sweet Coden 2. Snap! What, facts? Oh! They might be facts, but they still hurt! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, with that, oh, and uh, next week we are going to be asked, when it comes to games, are you a collector? Do you like to hold on to them and watch them sit pretty on your shelf? Are you a hoarder like I am? Good Lord. Or do you beat games and then sell them back on Amazon or eBay or something like that? Just kind of kind of curious what people do. So uh, check out our forums and uh, and answer that on there, or send us an email at frozenwithpodcast at gmail dot com. With that, I think this is everything for this week. Mark, you got anything else? I don't. Brian, you got anything else? I do not. With that, then this is the Frozen North signing off. We appreciate you listening as always. My name is JJ. I appreciate you listening even more. My name is Mark. And I just appreciate me. My name is Brian. I believe that. (laughs) Thanks again, and as always, keep on gaming. Our theme song was made available through the Creative Commons Attribution License by Ziphoid. The song title is Radical Fanfare.